Welcome to the IT Career Energizer podcast. For anyone who wants to build and grow a career in IT, develop and improve your strengths and skills, be inspired and motivated by the successes of others, manage your career progression, and achieve your IT career goals. And now, your host, Phil Burgess. Welcome to episode 245 of the IT Career Energizer podcast. My guest on today's show has worked in the IT industry for 18 years. He is currently a director and technology strategist for an IT services company based in the French Pacific, providing vendor agnostic digital advisory, professional services and training. He is also a chartered IT professional, a long-standing Microsoft certified trainer, a technology conference speaker and a mentor, as well as a former Microsoft Tech Idol winner. So welcome to the podcast, Sadiq Elibokas. Thank you for having me, Phil. Sadiq, can you perhaps tell us a little bit about what you're currently up to? Uh, Yes, Phil. Um, After my studies in 1999, I started working as an electronic technician. Uh, repairing uh, electronic equipments like TVs and radios. Uh, during that time, I started receiving uh, 40 computer monitors, 40 computer power supplies, and 40 motherboards for repair. Being curious about that thing called a computer, I started my first IT course in 2001. That's where my love relationship started with computers and which ultimately triggered my IT career in 2002 as an IT technician. From 2002 till now, I had the opportunity to occupy different roles in several companies as IT trainer, system administrator, system engineer, sales engineer, solutions architect, head of department uh, for system integration, infrastructure consultant until today as a director and technology strategist. Throughout my career, I had the opportunity to work with various hardware, software, and security technologies, and also to travel in uh, various regions across the world, including the Indian Ocean, Africa, Middle East, and the Pacific, where I am today. I always had a deep passion for two things in IT. The first one, it's Microsoft Server and Cloud Technologies, explaining the various titles that I received from Microsoft, like MCT, PSSP and PTSP, etc. And also why people nickname me the Microsoft guy. The second one is training delivery. I always believe that the more knowledge you share, the more knowledge you gain. This passion for training has allowed me to train over a thousand IT professionals around the world until now. That's quite a number. Uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, this was uh, like, you know, a uh, scale up on nearly, I must say, 18 years of my life. And today people ask me uh, what I do exactly as a technology strategist. My role as a technology strategist consists of using my combined breadth and depth IT expertise to assist organizations of all sizes as a trusted digital advisor, to put technology at the core of their innovation initiatives and to help them in building a strategic step-by-step roadmap to translate this vision into action. To say in simple words, I am a digital transformation driver for organizations, but with focus on three core areas. The first area is data center modernization. That is how to reduce cost and bring agility within the data center space with hyper-converged infrastructure, private cloud, public cloud, and hybrid cloud solutions. The second area is workplace modernization. That is how to allow people 
to collaborate and work together securely and seamlessly with smart and efficient operating system, enterprise-grade security tools, and seamlessly integrated workplace productivity apps. And the last one and the third area is security modernization. That is how to protect organizations against sophisticated and emerging cyber threats with a unified and friction-free experience using AI, machine learning, and zero trust model. That's in a, in a nutshell uh, who I am and what I do today. It sounds from the way you talk about it as well that you, you, you're very passionate about what you do and it, and it obviously drives you. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, uh, Phil, in this stream, I think that passion is the most important thing. That's the core energizer, if I can say like this. This field of IT, not only it's ever-changing, but there's lots to learn. We do have lots of things to learn. And I think passion is the most important thing that we require in the IT industry, when you are in the IT industry, to keep on evolving. It sort of takes us on to the first real question, which is, can you share with us a career tip, one that the audience may not be aware of and perhaps should be? Based on my professional experience, companies rise and fall. Today you are important in a role and tomorrow you might be redundant for X reason. That's why my primary career advice to anyone is to invest in yourself continuously. Invest in your personal development, grow your knowledge, your skills, your personality, and your networking as well. One of the biggest advantages we have in this knowledge-driven economy of today is that knowledge flows everywhere. We have all means to train ourselves and to keep ourselves up to date up from online trainings to webinars, podcasts, conferences, forums, and you name it. I believe that investing in yourself will increase your market value while contributing extensively in your overall well-being and also your degrees of freedom to create your own future. What do you do? What is your approach, if you like, to personal development? Regarding personal development, the most important thing today is R&D. That's the first important thing. And secondly, in the IT field, like in any other field, time is a valuable ingredient that we don't have enough, unfortunately. Yes. And, and that's why today the big plus that we are having, there are online trainings and video-based trainings that are available online. So today... Research and development is very important and knowledge, if you want to gain knowledge in specific fields in this ever-changing world of IT, I believe that video-based training is one of the most interesting way of building your competency on specific technologies and also to help you keep up to date without forgetting as well that today we've also got lots of webinars and online conferences that you can attend also so that you can have like, you know, an understanding in order to understand what's happening in the world of IT directly from the experts. Yes, I think you're right. There, there are so many um, opportunities as well. Uh, so many different mediums. Obviously, you mentioned video in particular, but obviously books are still a good source podcasts you've mentioned as well but yeah conferences and so forth so yeah plenty of plenty of ways that you can approach and tackle personal development exactly okay Sadiq, can you share with us your worst it career moment and what you learned from that experience i think in every career there are ups and downs which ultimately make us grow and become stronger uh, one of the difficult moments I had in my career was when I was promoted from 
a technical expert position to a people manager position without any experience, any skills, and without any coaching from the company in people management. That was a brutal transition. And the worst side, which was, I was left in the wild by the company. I had no other choice to learn people management on the spot by trial and error in harsh ways. This situation started to lead to my own identity demotion and uh, impacting my professional image as well. To prevent this situation from getting any worse, I eventually decided to leave the company and my job, which I really loved. This bad experience has also helped me to grow and learn a lot in life. The biggest lesson which I retain is that as a technical leader, managing people is very organic, which requires appropriate skill sets, which I have learned over time and which has greatly contributed in my success today. It's interesting that um, companies will often promote people into management or, or sort of team leader roles without necessarily them having or being given that sort of training or understanding of what that entails. It, it doesn't seem to have changed dramatically. This seems to be very much the case. Unfortunately, this is the case today, uh, Phil. You know, uh, you can be a very good technical guy. I've seen lots of situations where they've taken someone uh, who's very good technically at what he's doing and he has been promoted, like, you know, to manage a team of people. The skill sets that's required to manage people is different. You can be a very good technical leader, but you might not have what it takes as skills to manage people. And what I've seen in several cases is that rising stars are technically speaking, technical people, good technical people who are rising stars, end up failing in their career because they don't have the skills that's needed. So my advice and my request to our companies who are promoting people from a technical position to a people management position, coach those people, provide them a framework so that they can become like, you know, good uh, people manager. Otherwise, this will not only play against the team, but also it can, can play seriously against the career and even the image of that technical person who is trying his utmost best to manage people, but like, you know, with means that he's having in hands, which might not be the best means, by the way. Okay, we're going to talk about your IT career highlight next. So could you maybe tell us a little bit about that? One of my biggest career highlights is probably the launch of the first public cloud in Tahiti, which is the main island of French Polynesia located in the South Pacific. One of the telco providers in French Polynesia had the ambition to launch the first commercial public cloud in the country to help businesses in their digital transformation initiatives. Unfortunately, they faced many challenges in getting the right advice, the right solution, and the right strategy to come forward with a public cloud tailored for French Polynesia, which is, by the way, a micro-market lost in the middle of the Pacific. I was ultimately given the opportunity as an architect and a strategy advisor to assist the telco provider in their quest to come forward with their public cloud offer. I took this bold challenge and I invested myself completely in this project 
putting nearly all my expertise in action on the technical side, the strategic side, and the marketing side as well to bring to market the first cost-effective public cloud in French Polynesia. After six months, we launched the first Polynesian cloud with great success. The Polynesian cloud was even published as a case study by Microsoft to inspire other islands in their digital transformation initiatives. So seeing this cloud in action today and how it is helping companies locally to accelerate the digital transformation gives me a sense of great achievement. Has that model been replicated across the other islands as well now? Uh, it is uh, on the verge of getting replicated. Uh, we've got like, you know, some few other islands in the Pacific, like New Caledonia, Fiji as well, which has contacted us uh, so that they can replicate what we've done over here in French Polynesia on their level as well. So yes, other islands has started getting inspired but what we've done so that they can also help their the companies on their island in their digital transformation initiatives. Indeed. So yes, it sounds like a very inspiring story. And obviously, it's now an objective for other, other islands to do the same thing. Exactly. So Sadiq, what one thing excites you about the future of the IT industry and careers in IT? Looking forward... Emerging Industry 4.0, like cognitive and artificial intelligence, big data, blockchain, IoT, augmented reality, among others, will not only revolutionize the world we live in, but also they will create several business and career opportunities. On the other hand, this shift in the technology landscape will change the role of IT professionals from being purely technical to become innovation agents who will have a more important role in the digital transformation strategies of organizations. Similar to the internet revolution, I believe that we are at the edge of a next big, exciting revolution in the tech industry. And this is exactly what excites me today about the future of a career in IT. So it sounds like from what you were saying that you feel that the role or the roles within IT are getting more and more sort of aligned and integrated with actual business activity. Absolutely right. Because today... It's not sufficient to have only technical knowledge to work in the IT department of a company. You know, today companies, they want to use IT for several reasons. One of the reasons is to gain competitive edge. And that's where the IT guys, or the IT professionals of today, they need to have this combined knowledge of IT and also of business so that they can help uh, the business in achieving the business strategies. How will someone be able to help a company achieving their business strategies if they don't know how to articulate things in a business sense? That will be near to impossible. So yes, I feel very important today to have a combined knowledge of IT and business so that you can become a real asset for companies in an IT perspective. Yes, that's very true. Okay, we're going to go into the reveal round now. We're going to find out a little bit more about you and the way you think. Are you ready for this? Yes, let's, let's do it. So what first attracted you to a career in IT? It all started with my curiosity to understand how a computer works. This pushed me to do a training in PC repair and maintenance, which ultimately translated in embracing IT as a career. What is the best career advice you've ever received? 
The best career advice that I have um, probably received is from my dad, who always told me that work is not life, but it is part of life. Uh, Sometimes we get so immersed or become obsessed with career success that we end up in burning everything around us. We must build and uh, maintain a work-life harmony and ensure that we are happy in our career, happy in our life, and more importantly, happy in our mind. Ultimately, this happiness will translate into productivity and allow you to give the best of yourself, where ultimately everyone will benefit. What is the worst career advice you've ever received? The worst career advice that I have probably received is that there's no room for failure. I believe that failure is a very important factor in the career success equation. Even processes like design thinking today celebrates failure as a mean to improve. We learn from failures. We do. I believe we must try new things, commit mistakes, and learn from the failures. No failure means that we are not trying anything new, which I believe is dangerously enough to bring any career or personal advancement to a grounding halt. If you were to begin your IT career again in today's world, what would you do? I would most probably select a career oriented towards the cloud, AI, or cybersecurity by following my same academic and vendor certification path I followed in the past. That is, complete my basic academic qualifications learn a programming language like Python, complete some vendor certifications which are in high demand, in line with the job role I want to have, which will also increase my market value. Then step into the job market. From there, gain some years of field experience and ultimately tops everything with an MBA. That's probably what I would have done if I had to begin my IT career again today. What career objectives are you currently focusing on? I am currently focusing on building skills in some specialized areas in data center and cloud. Also, I am focusing in building a strong partner ecosystem within the Pacific and the Indian Ocean region to be able to work on more complex projects and to better accompany organizations in their digital transformation journey. What's the number one non-technical skill that has helped you in your career so far? Among all my non-technical skills, I think that listening has helped me a lot in growing my career. It's simply amazing the amount of information you can get and how much you can learn simply by shutting your mouth and opening your ears. (laughs) Uh, I think we must not listen only to hear, but we must listen to understand. And that's where I think active listening is an essential skill in any career success. It is. Yes, agreed. And what do you do to keep your own career energised? The opportunity to meet and learn from customers and my business partners is one of the key elements in keeping my own career energised. On the other side, I am deeply involved in constant R&D on the latest and greatest evolutions happening in the IT industry, exchanging with peers around the world and attending conferences worldwide. I also try to clear at least one industry certification every year 
and my latest one being from Citrix this year. What do you do in your spare time away from technology? I have the chance of living on one of the most beautiful islands in the world, in French Polynesia. So as a good islander, the first thing that I do during my spare time is to go to the beach and to meet and learn from the people living on this beautiful island. On the other side, I love to travel. I am a wanderlust, so to speak. I believe that the world is an open university of life. That's why I always reserve time to travel around the world, to meet new people, to learn new cultures, and to discover the real facets and beauty of our planet. Sadiq, can you share a parting piece of career advice with the IT Career Energizer audience? From my personal experience, my final piece of advice is if you want to excel in what you do, then make your profession become a passion. The biggest advantage of this is you will never feel like you're working. On the other hand, this will naturally push you to give the best of yourself and gain satisfaction in everything you do. And lastly, this passion will urge you to keep on learning and stay up to date, which is a very important aspect in this ever-changing world of IT. Yes, no, very good. And Sadiq, finally, what's the best way we can find out more about you and connect with you? Three ways. Uh, the first one is via my LinkedIn profile by searching for my name, Sadiq Elahibakas. I'm quite active on LinkedIn. You can also connect with me via my YouTube channel by searching my name again. Or you can simply drop me an email at Sadiq at mail.pf, I spell it S-I-D-D-I-C-K at M-A-I-L dot P-F. That's it. Sadiq, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. It's been great chatting with you. It was great talking to you, Phil. Thank you. Hi, Phil here again. Well, I hope you enjoyed my conversation with today's guest. You can find full show notes on the website at itcareerenergizer.com slash e and the number of the episode you've been listening to. If you haven't already subscribed to the show, please make sure that you do so that you get episodes automatically downloaded to your device every Monday. Thanks for listening and have a great week. Thanks for listening to the IT Career Energizer podcast. To find out more about building a successful career in IT, visit itcareerenergizer.com.